If Israeli-Palestinian peace talks are going nowhere, is there an alternative route to an independent Palestinian state? Leading figures in the Palestinian Authority seem to think there is a plan B. They're planning to make a declaration of independence later this year in the hope that the international community will back them. My guest is senior Palestinian Authority official Nabil Shah. The Palestinians say they're engaged in a process of state building. But what can it yield if Israel won't play ball? Nabil Shath in Ramallah, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. It seems to me that right now you and other senior Palestinian officials are very much preoccupied with winning diplomatic battles at the United Nations. Is that because gesture politics is all you have left? Well, I mean, the, the peace process has been destroyed by Mr. Netanyahu. Uh, uh, no credibility whatsoever because uh, all everything that we have signed on before he now considers null and void he will not implement any of the requirements of the roadmap and there is no sense really in going to negotiations while he deepens occupation through settlements and the de-arabization of Jerusalem so we have to fight our battles somewhere else and since we are not going back to violence Vi Nonviolent means include uh, home-based, uh, uh, popular nonviolent struggle, let's say uh, Indian, South African style, and international action, including seeking international recognition for our state and our borders, and seeking uh, international support against the Israeli drive to uh, deepen the, our occupation by colonization and settlement. All right, well, let's, we'll talk about your efforts at home in a moment, but let's stick with the international efforts. Uh, it seems to me that you are now saying you will go to the UN Security Council and seek a, a Security Council condemnation of Israeli settlement activity, even if the Americans have made it plain they will veto such a maneuver. Have I got it right? We are going to the Security Council, uh, uh, to the displeasure of the United States, really, which would want us very much not to go there so that they won't be embarrassed by vetoing a resolution which almost repeats their own words. I mean, it's utterly ridiculous uh, for the Americans to veto a resolution against settlements when their president in Cairo, in Istanbul, and lately in the United Nations have said exactly the same thing, that settlements are illegal, that they are a major obstacle to reaching a, a peaceful settlement, and uh, the United States condemns every new settlement activities that the Israelis do. The United States have joined in 15 earlier uh, re resolutions against settlements. It would be ridiculous, so, really, for the United States to veto that. So your purpose, then, your main purpose in doing it is to embarrass the Obama administration, is it? No, no, no. It's to uh, put pressure on Israel. It's to bring greater international support against the colonization schemes of Israel. But frankly, if you know that it's going to be vetoed by the United States, the end result will be minimal impact upon Israel, but a, a serious new rift between you and your own leadership and the United States of America. I'm just struggling to see what that achieves. We, we, we don't expect the United States to veto. But I, they, they've already indicated already that they, they do not want to see this resolution come forward, and one can only assume that they therefore will, will treat it with a veto if it does come forward. No, no, no. That, these are two separate decisions altogether. They would like us not to go to the Security Council because they know it would be very embarrassing for them to veto any resolution. So it would be much easier for them to dissuade us from taking our case to the international uh, community. But once there, I, I don't think they will veto. I think it will utterly destroy the credibility of the United States in this part of the world if they do. 
So uh, we don't know whether you're right or, or wrong when it comes to what the U.S. will do, but either way, it will be some sort of uh, formulation of words from the Security Council at the very same time as we see in the last few days the Israelis uh, unveiling a new plan for 1,400 housing units in the suburb they know as Gilo in, in the east of Jerusalem. We also see that they've demolished a, a key building in East Jerusalem called the Shepherd's Hotel. We know the construction activities right across the West Bank are continuing. What on earth good is it going to do, this form of words? Well, the words alone are not good enough. Uh, it's really uh, the amassing of uh, force, if you wish, of bringing about real isolation of the Israelis if they continue to do that, bringing about international pressure through a variety of means, and we are going through all of them. We're going to the, to the International Court of Justice. We're going to the International Criminal Court. We're going to Geneva for the uh, signatories of the Fourth Geneva Convention. We are not going to spare one venue to try to tighten the noose and to get the Israelis to feel the pressure that they cannot continue to violate international law, they cannot continue to flaunt the international community by deepening colonization in our land. But patently they can, and they are doing. They can, and they have been doing. Uh, they have uh, really st stopped that at certain times. They have reduced its speed at others, but they were always trying to really replace our people with settlers, which is illegal, which is a crime uh, against humanity. And this international community must really eventually do something to stop it. Uh, but but if I may say so, Mr. Shah, I think, you know, you and I have talked on this program and in other fora as well. You know, I've heard all of these words many times before. I'm sure you get sick of repeating them yourself. But I just wonder whether the Palestinian people are going to, in the end, regard it as worthwhile for you to expend so much effort on this sort of UN international diplomacy track. Because we can also now introduce the notion that within a few months, maybe by September, you're determined to make a formal declaration. Of, of independence, of statehood. Again, what, what difference are any of these maneuvers going to make? Well, alone they, they don't. We're, and that's what I said. This is really just a segment of our total uh, program of action facing the intransigence of Mr. Netanyahu. One is international action, but the other is escalating nonviolent uh, popular resistance and uh, uh, a, a protest against the Israelis everywhere that they have settlements. And thirdly, we are also continuing to build institutions as if the state is going to happen tomorrow. And so we will be ready on the infrastructure and the institutional side. We will continue to struggle on the nonviolent struggle side. And we will continue to pursue the Israelis international community. And then this is really what we can do. Uh, How short does that, of really yeah. going back to violence. Uh, I, I don't mean to pretend mm. uh, in my questions that any of this is, is easy politically, but I just wonder how it squares, you know, all that list of proactive things you've just described to me. How does that square with uh, your president the, of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas's words last month when he said, I cannot accept to remain president of an authority that does not exist. He seemed to imply that he was thinking of resigning and saying to the Israelis, look, you know, if you're prepared, if you're determined to continue with the settlement building, then just come back with a full occupation and let's have done with it. Well, the president have said that, and I would really call that the, 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 the sort of end game for the peace process, so the, uh, the apocalyptic option, if you, if you wish. I hope we'll never reach it. And I think all our efforts today is not to reach a situation where it becomes hopeless and, uh, and, and, and chaos reigns. Uh, this part of the world is, is always combustible and uh, uh, our nonviolent efforts are an attempt not to reach that apocalypse. Salam Fayyad, the, the uh, Palestinian sort of prime minister, loosely called, uh, uh, working of course to, uh, to Mahmoud Abbas, he has talked about the, the significant steps that have been taken, a thousand and more projects, he says, that have been undertaken in this state-building process. Uh, I just wonder whether, again, the Palestinian people are going to regard these steps as really significant or, or more of a cosmetic exercise. 
Well, the Palestinians have done a lot of struggle to get uh, uh, the occupation to, to end. And that included armed struggle for years. It included the, in, the two intifadas, which were really uh, a mixture of nonviolent and violent uh, uh, resistance to the occupation. Uh, we've been negotiating for 19 years since the Madrid conference. And uh, therefore, at this stage of the game, the Palestinians are simply telling the Israelis and the world, we are not giving up and we will try all types of options that will eventually get us independence. In the 21st century, we are the only remaining colony in the world today. Our country is totally occupied by the, by the Israelis. And so we're trying to say, end that occupation, and we will still be willing to negotiate borders, uh, security, water, whatever, but that occupation has to end, and a Palestinian state has to take its place. Sure, but the one fundamental point the Israelis keep coming back to is that none of this can be achieved unless you're prepared to talk to them. And that, from the beginning of this interview, is the one thing you've ruled out. We have talked to them for 19 years, and uh, we were supposed to have a state in five. It is now four times the five years that was supposed to be the dead end for all of these negotiations. We have signed myriad uh, agreements and we received a hundred uh, international supporting statement and the Israelis today do not recognize any and, and therefore it's not really for short of talking that this has, that this has been achieved. We've talked and talked and actually during last September our president alone uh, spent 16 hours with Mr. Netanyahu talking in locked rooms with only Mrs. Clinton witnessing. And that really brought us nowhere. We are willing to go back talking if there's at least one guarantee, and that is Israel implements what has been signed, including a total freeze on settlements. If Israel do th does that, we will go back to negotiation. But without it, there's absolutely no credibility that we will not spend 19 more years. And when we agree on anything, Israel won't implement it. Sure, but you talk about the dangers of just talking and talking, but are you not falling into the same trap? And I'm now coming back to this idea that you're going to make the big set-piece announcement, apparently in September, the declaration of statehood. Number one, it won't change a single thing on the ground. Israel will still control, fully control 60%. Uh, of the West Bank and will, in essence, still dictate what happens across the occupied territories. And not only that, uh, frankly, it, it will simply show that the Palestinians, to their own people, are full of bluster and not much else. Well, the, our people are telling us, why the hell did you spend 19 years talking and achieve nothing? Uh, what is this uh, uh, international community doing if it witnesses and cosigns and all of these quartets, which include the four major uh, powers in this universe, cannot even get Israel to implement any. And let me correct you, Israel is not controlling 60% of the West Bank. Israel is controlling 100% of the West Bank. There is not one city in the West Bank that is not occupied by the Israelis. And Gaza, which supposedly uh, uh, not occupied, is totally encircled by land, by air and sea, with a draconian siege, really, that's driving people mad. And therefore, our people's complaint is, what the hell have you been doing? Talking and talking for 19 years, signing and signing all of these agreements. Why don't you try something else? Well, I agree that, that, that I, 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 think, I think you may well be right about what they're saying, but they're looking at you very pointedly, Mr. Shath, and your colleagues at the top of the Palestinian Authority and saying things like, why, when they use this sort of language today, are they at the very same time still cooperating uh, across a range of security issues with the Israelis and with the Americans, with the so-called Dayton Security Forces, doing Israel's dirty work for them.